So we progress from novice to expert in virtually everything that we encounter in our lifetime. From learning to type, to compound bow archery, to fixing your own car. And none of us start out as an expert. We all start out as novices. And we have no problems with the idea of being a novice and seeking out the information that we don't have to teach ourselves something new that we're enthusiastic about. We could teach ourselves to crochet. We could teach ourselves to bow hunt. We could teach ourselves to fix our own car or to build an electric bicycle. But for some reason, we've been convinced that we can't understand coronavirus biology. That it's way beyond our conceptual means. And this is absurd. Epidemiology and the understanding of the way germs move through populations is very simple biology with a little bit of math mixed in. The point is, is that if we understood it well enough, we would be able to interpret this pandemic as the respiratory virus that it is. And we would be able to make decisions and critique the decisions that are being made by our leaders with much more force and knowledge. And instead of being sort of paralyzed by the mainstream media and their constant coverage of the pandemic, we would be more up in arms about the six odd trillion dollars that they've taken from us in the disguise of a stimulus bill. So my boys and I picked up archery for the uh, pandemic school, school postponement. Schools here in Pennsylvania have been canceled for the rest of the year. I've long been into archery. I've wanted to get back into it for a long time. Never was really serious about hunting and now I think my boys and I are going to finally get serious about it. And while getting into this it has struck me as odd that rather I, I guess it didn't strike me as odd that I thought that I could just go to the internet and I could watch some videos and I could read some websites and I could learn the basics of compound bow physics and that I could just kind of teach myself what I needed to know about choosing a compound bow for my sons and choosing a compound bow for myself. And I managed to do that with Craigslist and I got a couple really nice Hoyt bows that are very adjustable from the early 2000s. They're old bows, but after they're restrung and they've been tuned a little bit, they're shooting really nice. And, and, and all of this information I was able to gather off the internet. And it never once occurred to me that this is strange or bizarre. You want to learn something, you just teach it to yourself, right? So I guess I find myself wondering why it is that when we start talking about biology then all of a sudden everybody thinks that they can't possibly learn it. They can't possibly know enough about biology to understand how this pandemic works. And I think there's almost a, a concerted effort to make sure that you believe that that you can't understand it, that it's beyond your expertise. Well, I'm here to say today that it's time for us to throw this notion away. There is no phenomenon in modern biology that's not explainable 
to the average intelligence person. There isn't. There's no reason why they can't take the time to put an epidemiologist on television and have this epidemiologist explain to us the worst case scenario and the best case scenario, the pros and cons of closing early versus late, and whether or not social distancing at a particular time point in relative to the pandemic spread makes any mathematical difference in the total number of people that we can expect to die. We're not going to have those discussions on television because they don't want you to understand how simple these numbers are and how much we know about them, how dependent they are on population density or living situation, living uh, conditions, how many people live in a building, how many people ride on a train per day. One thing we don't have to question is whether or not we can understand this. Of course we can understand it, it's just biology. It's a question of whether they want us to understand it. You're going to have to work for it this time, folks. You're going to have to read some papers and you're going to have to draw some conclusions on your own. You're not going to be able to just passively absorb the, the bullshit that's on television. It's no longer allowed. It's no longer possible because there is no good information there anymore. If Judy Woodruff is the, is the foremost expert on coronavirus and the only person that PBS NewsHour is going to allow to talk to us besides Bill Gates, there's no truth on TV, folks. We don't need to know the, the intricate details of the molecular biology of viruses to understand what we know from decades and decades of epidemiology. We're just sort of choosing not to pay attention to that. And it's shocking. Compound bows fixing your own car and coronavirus biology. If you want to learn about compound bows, you've got to read. You've got to be smart enough to know what you don't know. Smart enough to know what you need to know. Or to figure it out. How to fix your own car, same thing. You need a teacher. You need encouragement. You need a mentor. No one's ever going to tell you they can't learn to fix a car. No one's ever going to tell you they can't learn to fix a car. But they're going to tell you over and over again on TV that we can't understand this pandemic. This is nothing we've ever seen before. This is a new phenomenon. I'm sorry, folks. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Don't listen to this. It could be an especially severe respiratory virus. It could. But the biological facts are that this virus, no matter how bad it is, is not going to have crazy different effects from any other virus. It's not going to have invent, we're not going to need to invent new math to understand this break, outbreak. We're just not. We're not going to have to invent new math to understand this. It's going to be the same as any other. The variables that describe the phenomenon will just be slightly different than the last one. Or not. Maybe they won't be any different than the last one. And then where are we? Then what do we do? So part of the problem is, is that there is a financial incentive for them to f inflate the numbers of the infections and inflate the numbers of deaths. The way that works is that the CARE Act, which was recently passed by Congress, has in it a very specific, specific set of circumstances wherein hospitals are reimbursed. Specifically, they are only reimbursed for COVID cases, which means that every case, whether it tests positive or not for COVID, is going to be listed as a COVID case to maximize the reimbursement of funding. I know this sounds very shady, it almost sounds disingenuous, but this is the legislation that was passed, so the hospitals have no choice. If they are honest about the numbers, and they are honest 
about the number of people that are testing positive for COVID, then the amount of money that they will be reimbursed will be at least cut in half, if not worse. So there is financial incentive for the pandemic to continue. There are two recent studies which have just come out from California which show that the number of asymptomatic cases in the population is much higher than we thought. And these numbers are now not being produced, not being, not being discussed, not being at all reported in the mainstream media. And it's not really clear to me why, other than the fact that these numbers don't go along with their desired pandemic theater. And so we still don't have any epidemiologists on TV. They're still not talking to Knut Wotkowski or, or uh, Wolfgang Wodog. Bill Gates got a couple more interviews though. Got a lot more airtime on NPR. And since we don't have a coronavirus vaccine for the common cold and we don't have a coronavirus vaccine for SARS or MERS, it seems really dubious to me that we're talking so freely about having a vaccine here, but you know, we'll just have to watch and wait and see. I think for as far as checking up on Wolfgang Wodogs and, uh, and uh, Knut Wachowski's uh, predictions, I think we can safely say that somehow or another the pandemic is not panning out to be quite as terrifying and crazy as they were selling it to be. And I'm not sure why that is, but it's starting to peter out. They are not able to sustain it. Even with more testing, the number of positive cases is still decreasing, even though they're ramping up testing like crazy in New York. And I think if you want to understand the way that this works, if you're really interested in the fine details of the potential theater that's being executed here, I think the person to follow on Twitter is the ethical skeptic. The ethical skeptic has been tracking the the real numbers as far as the number of people that have been tested, the number of people that are testing positive, the number of people that are testing positive or being listed as positive at death. And what the ethical skeptic has found is that they basically are ramping up testing whenever the the numbers are needed and they're only testing the people who are severely ill and so they're sort of keeping the R number artificially high, the R naught artificially high, and they're keeping the, the, the lethality or the mortality rate artificially high. As I said before, there's a financial incentive for the hospitals to report as many victims as possible as being COVID-19. There's a direct financial incentive for that. So to say that these numbers are completely, completely reliable is, is ridiculous because we know that the number of deaths and we know that the number of infections, especially the number of deaths, is being inflated because deaths that are not COVID positive but are suspected to be COVID positive are still being listed by the CDC as COVID deaths. And again, this comes from the Financial Incentive in the CARE Act. It doesn't come from any overt malfeasance on the part of anybody in, in health care. Maybe in, the, in terms of administrative administrative people at hospitals and the people that are directly responsible for the financial well-being of hospitals, the people that report to the private equity firms that own those hospitals may very well be orchestrating something. But it's for financial gain, right? Same shifty bullshit disguised as capitalism. So I just want to make this point. Compound bow physics are complicated. Fixing your car is complicated. Both of those activities require you to understand complex principles of engineering and physics, how forces are working together to produce an outcome. They require you to identify things that you don't understand and find sources of knowledge and information that allow you to understand them. That's how you gain the knowledge from going from a complete novice bow hunter to being an expert in setting up a bow for a beginner. That's how you go from being a guy who can barely change the oil in your car to being able to completely disassemble the front end and put in a new engine that you ordered on Amazon. These kinds of skills that are, that are 
gained through trial and error, through reading, and through understanding what you don't know, through critical thinking. These kinds of skills are evidence that all of us are capable of understanding the world around us. But for some reason, for the coronavirus, we've all collectively decided that we need experts to tell us how this biology works. We need people with answers. We need companies and corporations with solutions to this problem. None of us are thinking for ourselves and we need to start doing that. We need to start thinking for ourselves.